So we're on for the next one. Okay. So I was asked to talk about database models and this particular section is fairly technical and I don't have any way to make it less technical and say anything useful. So I beg your indulgence and I beg you to ask questions. The purpose of this part is to try to get you familiar with the structures of databases because as the theme of the course is data capture we need a place to put the captured data and the captured data should go into some digital format and databases happen to be a good solution to that. Now I'm going to distinguish between databases and spreadsheets. You might think that a spreadsheet is a database but in technical terms it is not. A spreadsheet is an organization tool as a database is, but it lacks many of the critical concepts of a database. One critical com uh, concept that it lacks is rigorous organization. I can demonstrate that to you fairly easily if I use one of our previous spreadsheets. I'll just use the spreadsheet that we were using a moment ago to tell you why this isn't a database. In this spreadsheet, I have the opportunity, the, the right, let's say, to reorganize the data. Suppose I want to sort the data. And I would like to order these two columns by the value in this field. Okay? We've all done this sort of thing. So I'll do that. Data sort. And I want to sort by the Darwin Core name field and I would like for it to descend. I would like the greatest values to be on the top. Okay, Excel's great, that was easy. What have I done? Now, I close the Excel spreadsheet and I go away because I was happy with my work. And I come back and I open my spreadsheet and I look at this and go, who messed up my data? Because now I've got year mapped to catalog number. And I have no way to fix that. I have totally messed up my database and I have no way to recover. I can't unsort it after I've gone away to put it back where it was. A database won't allow me to be that stupid because the database will have a record for the catalog number and all the values here will be eternally connected to it. I can't rearrange things that way on purpose. So that's the simplest way that I can tell you the difference between a spreadsheet and a database. Excel allows you to be stupid, a database doesn't. And a database doesn't on purpose, that's what it's for, is to make sure people can't be stupid. Now, people find creative ways to be stupid in databases. It's really hard to keep people from being stupid, but it does a better job of keeping you constrained in your creativity. Okay. So now, why are databases better? One is you can't be stupid in the way that I just demonstrated. But what are some of the other features of them? So, there are plenty of kinds of ways that data can be organized and managed and these days 
you hear words like big data and cloud and NoSQL data store and all these fancy words. They're all sort of databases in one way or, the, or another. And they're all built for one purpose or another, to be good at something. For what we want to talk about, that is structuring data to make sense out of it in something less simple than a spreadsheet, what we want to talk about are relational databases. I should make this bigger. I should have PowerPoint slides and all that as well, but I unfortunately did not have time to do that. Okay, so what we're talking about now and for the rest of this part are relational databases. Why are they relational? It's because you will have concepts that are related to each other. You remember yesterday when I began to talk about identifiers and global unique identifiers. And specifically I was talking about specimens and the images associated with them. So now I have two concepts. A concept of a specimen and a concept of an image. And in our minds, we can easily keep those things apart because we have evolved to be very good at categorizing things, to put them in categories. So if we think of an image and all the characteristics of an image, we can put them in one category. And if we think of a specimen and all the characteristics of a specimen, we can put that in a different category. But we want to relate the two because there are images of specimens. Okay. Conceptually, that's what we're talking about, relating categories of information. Now, in relational databases, those categories are divided up into tables. So, in a relational database, I would have a table of specimens and I would have a table of images. And each table would have data fields in them. And the data fields would correspond as yesterday to the terms that we were talking about. Do you remember the simple images extension? It had information just about images, such as an identifier, a creator, a URL, a title, just about the images. So those would be fields in an images database or an images table, sorry, in an images table. And then the simple Darwin core fields, such as a scientific name, and recorded by, and georeferenced by, all those are fields associated with a specimen. So fields in a specimen table. So we're keeping them separate from each other. So if you must think about spreadsheets for the time being, they would be in two different spreadsheets. Now, if you're an Excel expert, tell me how do you relate the images to their specimens in an Excel spreadsheet? You don't. They're on different sheets and that's the best you can do. They're not really related to each other. So the Excel spreadsheet fails to be a database in that respect. It doesn't have the concept of tables that can be related to each other. But a database does. And the way that they're related to each other is through fields that have values in common in both tables. I'll get to that in a moment. First, I want to say one little thing about data types. In an Excel spreadsheet, you can set the data type of a cell. Right? If I have a, a cell, I can go there, say format, cell, date and say what the date should look like. But in the cell just above it, I can format that one as text. And the one above that, I can format that as an integer. I have the freedom in Excel to format every cell exactly how I want it. But that means I have trouble if I want consistency in the column. If I want my whole column to be dates, 
and I have the ability to set one as a date, one as an integer, and one as text, and enter data in those formats, then I've ruined the concept of consistency for my column. And whenever I try to do mappings from Excel spreadsheets into Darwin Core as a database, I run into that problem. It'll show me some kind of an error. It says this isn't a date because of those formatting issues. So in the database, I have the concept of data typing. In Excel, I can do it in a, in a cell. In a database, I cannot do it in a cell. I can only do it in a column. I can set the data type for a whole column. And that forces me to be consistent, which reduces my capacity to be stupid, again. So another way to constrain me so that I don't make mistakes. Again, that's what the database is for. So now, going back to the idea of relational, if I have two tables, an image table and a specimens table, and I know they're related to each other because they're images of specimens, then I need to be able to say somewhere which image goes with which specimen. How are they related? Now, I scratch my head and I say, okay, think of this as my family. Who's my father? I can run around with a label on my chest that says, my father is, so on. And that's convenient, because I only can have one father, biologically. So I'm unique, or he's unique in that respect to me. He is the only one who is my father. So I can label the relationship on me in that direction. Now. Let me go to my father. He has the capacity to say his relationship to me as well. He can say, my son is John. But as happenstance would have it, I'm not his only son. I'm not unique in that respect. So if he puts a label, my son is John, then all my brothers get jealous. Because I'm the only one that can be labeled in that way. It's the only way to do it. So you can see that there's a natural way for the relationship to be specified. And that is for me to say the unique relationship. My father, my parent, is that other person. So that's how the relationships are done in databases. Now, a specimen can have more than one image. Same thing as the specimen can have more than one child. So I don't want the image identifier to be in my specimen table, because then I could only have one. Instead, I need the specimen identifier to be with my image to say that's the specimen that I belong to, that's my parent. Okay? There's a direction, a natural direction between the two. And those, in the database language, are called keys. They're keys. And then, just so that I have done my duty, there are two types of keys then. The one that uniquely identifies me is my primary key. It is unique. And the one that identifies my father, or my parent, is the foreign key. It's something outside of me. So in databases, there are primary keys and foreign keys. And it's those keys that are used to relate tables. So let me show you this in an example database. Now this is the one that I don't have a way to make it bigger easily. I'm sorry about that. 
This is the structure of the simple images table in a relational database. If you remember when we looked at that simple images extension in, on GBIF's website, it began with a field called identifier and then had references, title, description, and so on. So these, the second one down, were all field names in the simple images extension. 